Do you see this uh, large barn over there? That there is a 200 year old tobacco barn. This one is, it's 200 years old also. I don't know exactly what they used that one for, but there's another barn right there, two over there, more back here, and a 200 year old home right here that was built and lived in by a Revolutionary War captain. Sounds pretty cool, right? I think so, and so, well, we bought it. Myself, my wife, and my wife's parents. We went in together and, whew. So we're here in uh, Middle Tennessee. While I smoke tobacco that I actually found in the barn that I think is 200 years old. That's not true, but that'd be pretty cool. So this property is kind of really a dream come true for all of us, but especially my wife. Having a piece of property, it's a pretty large piece of property, and having it filled with the amount of history that this property has. <coughs> I'm not a real smoker of tobacco. As I walk around this place, it blows me away that this is ours now. Um, we bought it for quite a few reasons. One is that we wanted a place outside of California to be able to spend time because California is it's both an amazing place to live and a horrible place to live. And so we wanted to have a place where we could go to get away when it just becomes too much. And so we found it here in the middle of Tennessee. All right, so a little backstory on the house real quick. And then I wanna talk about what this means for our family and I. My family, our family, our, like we have a family together, we don't, it's just my family. Take it easy, hands off, they're mine. So this house here, construction began in 1801. Construction was completed in 1806. And uh, it was built by Al Abaros, Abras, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Anyways, Mr. Blackburn <laughs> was uh, the guy who built this thing and he was a captain in the Revolutionary War. After the war, Captain Blackburn came here to this exact land and built this home. Welcome to our 200 year old farmhouse, which you can see behind us. This uh, is going to be a project, no doubt. Needs a lot of work, which requires a lot of money and a lot of time. So keep watching these videos because I gotta make some money somehow. If you'd like to contribute to help us uh, finish this help, send your money to P.O. Box, care of, I don't know how addresses work. Let me show you around though. These chairs are uh, not original, believe it or not. These walls, however, are original. You can actually see the ax marks in the wood. Some of these old original beams still have the bark on them. And that is crazy. Look at this. Uh, at the time he built it, there was nothing out here. Um, but a few years later, they decided to form a county out here and there were no buildings or anything. So they actually used this building right over here that you can't see right now. Uh, they used that as the courthouse or no, the court met in the house maybe. And they used this for deliberation. That's what it was. Like juries would deliberate. It was also a post office. It was used for a lot around here. Amazingly to me, there's actually a little cemetery on the property where Blackburn is buried. He has a tombstone. Ambrose Blackburn himself, who is actually a captain in the Revolutionary War. There's more graves here, but some of them we can't quite see. This one's buried. This one's nameless, but they know who it is. This one has a name, but it's hard to read. This property sat pretty much vacant for a number of years now. And so it's very overgrown. And so the more and more we explore the property, the more we find. Like literally just a couple of days ago, we found two more large barns that are in very good shape. It blows me away. 
One of the things I find interesting and one of the things I love about history is that I love putting myself into different places, like in my head, I love thinking of, uh, what, that sounds really weird, doesn't it? I like putting my head into different places, what? Little pipe care here real quick. You know, you get that buildup of ash in the top of your bowl. I just kind of dump it out a little bit, the soft stuff, do a little repack, and then uh, continue on my way. I know, you hate, you hate that I use a torch lighter on the pipe. And I always get comments, well, one, that's like, you should never use a torch lighter on your pipe. And I say, I, I own a, a tobacco farm, so I know everything there is to know about. I'm, I'm now officially professional pipe smoker. Something about history that I find to be very true is that in some cases, I think a lot more solutions to modern day problems can be found by looking to the past rather than the future. The future is amazing. I'm really excited about the technology and the changes and the things that are coming our way, a lot of which are extremely scary, but I'm still excited about them. But there is a source of security and understanding and I think wisdom that can be found by looking into the past. There's this guy I met uh, in California, way up Northern California. He was talking about the past like this, and I love it. I think it's the perfect analogy for the past. He said, think about a train going down the tracks, and the front of the train is scooping up new information because in the world today, there is so much new information being flooded into our minds at an alarming rate because of technology. We just can pick up new information so fast and so much of it. So this train is just scooping up this new information and filling up the train with all this new information. But the thing is, the train can only hold so much new information. So at the back of the train, there's a guy unloading all of the old information to make more room for the new information. And the problem with that is that the old information that's being unloaded has taken a thousand years of human history to glean. I think it's extremely valuable, and I think in the modern world, so much of it has been lost that it could really, could really cause some problems and make things more difficult than they need to be. There's also all kinds of historical artifacts and furniture, like this massive armoire. There's a door over here. There's whatever this is. Any ideas on what the heck this might be? I have no idea. It's a stick with a thing on it, and uh, and so that's. I have no idea. So for us to own a place like this, where it's literally history all around us, we're living amongst history. Uh, I'm really excited to see what we're gonna learn and how we can implement that into our lives. There's so many lessons to be learned when you take on a project like this. Some good, some bad. It's gonna be very difficult, I realize that, but overall, there's so many valuable lessons you can pull from that. The hard work, the learning to get through difficulties together with the family, the self-awareness you have because you're doing this work with your family. So when you have those really stressful, difficult times, you figure out how you work in front of your family. How are you gonna process this? Because you wanna be a good example for your kids and show them how you manage stress, how you manage difficulties. To me is very, very valuable, especially for kids today, where life is extremely easy and soft. Just a little tangent here. I mean, kids and adults are soft, wimpy, squishy, cuddly, comfortable, creatures of habit that if push came to shove and we needed people to show up, we needed like, <sighs> it's a little scary to look at the crop of people we have today. There's this quote that I heard a while ago that I love. 
Easy times make soft men. Difficult times make strong men. Is that it? Something like that. Did you see that massive, whew. Oh, thanks for watching, by the way. If you like videos that include tobacco pipes and thoughts from a dad trying to become a better dad, um, subscribe to the channel, like this video. Let me know that you enjoyed this and want more of it. Appreciate it, thanks for watching.